Video uploading and video streaming scare most developers. Like how do you upload and pass a video to your backend and then save that video to a database? And on the reverse side, how do you stream that video using data bytes and then present it on the user interface? Well, in this video, we will answer that exact question. We'll go over step-by-step step on how to tackle this problem. And at the end of the video, you'll have a full stack app that can upload videos and stream them. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. All right, so initially I have an empty video streaming directory. Well, it's empty in Python case, but it has a static directory with styles and it has templates with a couple HTML pages inside. If you want the code, you can get it directly below. Now, the very first thing we need to do is install some of the dependencies that we need to make this project work. So right here, I am going to first start up my virtual environment. And I can do this by saying source dot V E and V slash bin slash activate. So now I'm in my virtual environment and now I need to go ahead and install the dependencies that we need for this project. And we're going to need to do a pip install Supabase, fast API, Uvicorn, Jinja2, Python dot E and V Python multipart and HTTPX. Now, once you get all of these installed, we'll be able to create endpoints and we'll be able to have all the ingredients or libraries and frameworks and all that fun stuff that we need to be able to upload and stream videos. Now, inside our main.py file, I have a couple lines of code already created. These are the imports that we're going to need. Load.env, this allows us to be able to pull our Supabase API endpoints out of our .env file. And then we have all of our connected to our HTML. So really simple things to get the project started. Now, what we want to do is head over to Supabase. If you don't have an account yet, it's free to create an account. Go over there and create an account. And what we're going to want to do is say new project. And you need to choose your organization. You, you can create your own personal one like I did with Coding with Roby. And now we need to create a project name. I'm going to name this Video Streaming Tutorial. And then for database password, we need to pass in some type of database to create a to create a database with our project. Here you can select your region. I'm going to say US East Ohio and then create project. Now creating a project will take a little bit of time, uh, not too long, but it will take just like a minute or two to get set up. And I'll come back to the video once it's complete. All right, it is complete. So from here, we can come down to our project settings. And just to kind of get everything started, we need to go down to our um, APIs. And right here, we can see all of our API endpoints. So grab your URL for your project, and then come back into your code, hop into your um, .env file and paste it in as the URL. Then let's go ahead and grab this Anon um, key. So we can just grab that, go into here and paste it inside here. And now the Supabase bucket we need to create. So we can come into our um, storage, go ahead and say new bucket. I'm going to name this bucket YouTube video stream. And we want to make this bucket public and say save. Now we have this right here. This is the name that we need to do. So YouTube video stream, go back into your visual code and just type it in right here. All right, perfect. Okay, so now that we have all of our configuration set up, the very last thing we need to do inside our Supabase is go into our policies, create a new policy, say for full customization. We're going to say um, allow anonymous users to upload files. We could just select all of them just to make it easy. And then right here in our policy definition, we're going to want to say auth.role can be anonymous, which means um, users that aren't signed in are able to upload to our bucket. And this is just for simplicity's sake for us to be able to upload videos and then be able to stream them. And this shouldn't take too long to do. All right, our policy was saved. Now what we can do is go into our YouTube video stream and I'm going to drop two videos in here video one and video two. Now these are very small videos that are recorded in 2080p. That's because in the free Supabase, we only have 50 megabytes. So I made sure that they're really small. 
But really what they're doing is I'm just saying, hi, everybody, the first time and then the second time. I'm essentially doing the same exact thing, but I'm holding up the number two. And then I have a third video where I'm holding up the number three that will be added. Perfect. So what we can do from here now is let's go back into our code and let's go into our main.py file. And now we need to start adding some of our code. So the very first thing we want to be able to do is be able to fetch all of our videos. So on the home page, a user can select one of the images they want to watch. So to do this, we can just create a simple git endpoint. So we can say at app.git slash at the normal slash. And then response class is going to be an HTML response. And then we can say async def home request of request. And then videos equal. And now here's where we're pooling out just the list of the items we have in the bucket. So we can say superbase.storage.from our superbase bucket dot list. This is going to pull everything from our YouTube video stream. And then we want to return templates.template response of our home.html with a request of request and our videos of videos. All right, so if we go ahead and just run this application by saying uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And we go to this page. We can see that we get video one and video two. Now, if you click it, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to error out. And that's because we don't have any functionality yet. But there we can see both available videos. Now, what we need to do is be able to stream the video and be able to watch the video. So they're kind of required two different things. So what we can start by doing is just saying at app.get slash videos of our video name. So we're going to recall an endpoint once you click on one. Where it's async def get video, where we're going to be passing in our video name of string. Video URL equals superbase.storage.from or superbase bucket dot get public URL of the video name. So we're being able to fetch the video URL based on the video name that we pass in. We want to make sure that the video URL is not empty. So we can say if not video URL return error video not found. And now we need to go ahead and stream that video, like literally stream it to our client. And we can do this by saying async def video stream. So we have a function inside here where async with HTTPX dot async client as client. So we're creating an asynchronous client. We want to say async with client dot stream or get of our video URL that we got up above. Where our headers is range of bytes equals zero minus that makes it allow us to be able to translate the stream into bytes. We do not want there to be a timeout and we want this to be as a response. And then we can say async for chunk in response eight or bytes. And then yield chunk. So a chunk is a piece of the stream. It's like what we're streaming at a time because we don't have the whole thing at once. So we're getting chunks, pieces of the video. And then we're going to return the streaming response in fast API using our video stream that we just created, which is that function with the media type video slash MP4. Now that is the actual functionality of being able to stream the video. Now to be able to watch the video, we need like a new page so we can do this. So let's go ahead and just create this right underneath where we say at app dot get slash watch slash video name. Where our response class is an HTML response. Where we have an async def watch video request of request and video names of our string.
title equals our video name and we're going to split it and then pull the first element out of the list and replace it with an underscore and then replace the underscore with a space and this is just because of how the naming convention of the names are when we upload them to Superbase. And then we want to return the templates.template response to our watch.html, where we return a request of request, video name of video name, and title of title. All right, so let's see if we can go ahead and stream it now. If we go back into our application and we click video one, we can see that it was just streaming successfully. All right, so let's play this. Hey friends. All right, now let's go video two, just so we can show that we have more than one video and they were just streaming. Hey friends, this is the second video. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. Now what we want to do is be able to upload a video and then be able to stream that exact video. So let's go back into our code and let's close out of this. Now the very first thing that we want to do here is be able to upload, be able to go to our upload HTML page. So we can say at app.get slash upload with our response class of HTML response. And then we can say async def upload form request of request. And then return the templates dot template response back to our upload dot HTML with a request of request. All right, and now we need to be able to upload. So we can say at app.post slash upload async def upload video where we pass in request of request. A title because we're gonna have a title that we can name the video. That's gonna be a string which is equal to a form. And then a video upload, which is going to be of type upload video, upload file, and then that's also going to be equal to a file. Now we want to be able to extract the bytes out of the video itself. So we can say contents equal await video file dot read. Now we want to upload this video to our storage. So we can say file extension equals video file dot file name dot split at the period minus one. That just means we can find out what kind of extension it is like an MP4. We want to be able to find the file name. So we can say equals F parentheses, title dot replace, and we want to replace the spaces with the underscore. Also then add the file extension. And now we have our file name. And then we can say response equals superbase dot storage dot from our bucket and then upload the file name and the contents. So we have the name now that we're going to overwrite for the name. and then the contents, which is gonna be the bytes that we're gonna be able to upload on our storage bucket. And then we can say, if response.status code is greater than 400, well then we can just throw a mess, well, then we can just have a message that equals error uploading video. And then else message equals video uploaded successfully. And then we can return the templates dot template response back to our upload dot HTML with a request of request and message of message.
All right, so let's fire up our application again. Go back to our um, main file. Let's go to upload video, where we now have an upload video page, where I am going to say video three. Let's choose our file, video three, upload. And this might take just two seconds to upload as we're sending bytes across. Video uploaded successfully. Let's go back to our home page. And there we go. We see our new video three. And let's listen to it. Hey friends, third video here. So we have uh, video one, two, and three, where we're able to upload, save it to a storage, and then stream it back. Hope you liked the video, and I will see you in the next.